This is Darius and Carmen Britt with Wealth Nation, and today we're going to walk you through the infinite banking process. If you like what we share with you today, make sure you smash that subscribe button and uh, like our video. Yes. So let's go ahead and get to it. Um, a lot of people ask us, how does infinite banking work? How can mm -hmm. I become my own banker? And there's two steps to this. Mm -hmm. So the first step is with infinite banking, we replace your savings account with a whole life insurance policy. So why in the world would we do that? Is because right now in your savings account, you're earning 0.01%, or I'll be generous. Let's say the banks are giving you 1%, yeah. <laughs> one whole percent on the money that's sitting in your savings account. Mm -hmm. That's not exciting, is it? No. <laughs> so all we do is we move that money that's sitting in your savings account into a whole life insurance policy. Why? Because whole life insurance policies are paying a guaranteed 4% compounded interest rate. Compounded interest rate, that's interest on interest. Mm -hmm. So just by taking your savings account and relocating it to a whole life insurance policy, you're able to have compound interest and have your money working for you. Mm -hmm. So um, with that, not only are you earning the guaranteed 4% compounded interest rate, but you do have a death benefit should something happen to you and your family can be protected. Now, one thing to note is how we design our whole life insurance policies. They have maximum cash value. There is cash value in the very first year, whereas a traditional whole life policy doesn't necessarily have cash value until the third or fourth year and the growth isn't as strong. Mm -hmm. So that's something to keep in mind. We design our policies for maximum cash value growth because we want you to be able to utilize your policy while you're living. Right. So when it comes to cash value growth, you're going to borrow the cash value from your policy. And the reason why we said borrow is because of that compound interest that, that's grown within your policy. If you borrow it, you don't disturb the compounding of your policy or your cash value. So you can borrow the money and still earn a guaranteed 4% interest rate on your money even when you borrowed it out. Now, what I wanna show you is what happens when you borrow the money from your insurance policy because until that point you just have a whole life insurance policy when you borrow the money from your insurance policy that's when you start participating in infinite banking because it's most important what you do with that money after you borrow it so i'm going to switch to my screen and show you exactly what carmen and i did with our very first policy what you see in front of you is a financial gps and we are being 100 percent transparent with you and showing you exactly what our personal GPS looks like. A GPS is a guide that all of our clients get that shows them how to use the cash value in their insurance policy to accomplish their financial goals. Let me show you what you're looking at. On the left hand side, you have the months or, or time frame, and going across, you'll see all the debts that we have, which comes to about $120,000. So starting with our Chase Southwest card, you see that we have a balance of $900 where we're paying a minimum payment of 50 bucks. We had an interest rate of 24% and we're gonna pay that minimum payment for the next 23 months. So from November 2016 to October 2018, we would have been paying them $50 a month for this $900 balance at 24%. Followed by the BB&T where you can see the same setup where Minimum payment was $53. We were going to pay this at 11.4% for the next 40 months, followed by Amazon at 26%. Our Wells Fargo business card was 0%. Our Wells Fargo personal, a Chase United card at 16.24%, a BBVA loan at 10%, and a personal loan at 10%. Now, going back to the policy, you see that we did a policy on Carmen in the amount of $10,000. That's our premium for the next four years. The first loan that we took out was the following month for $5,456. So once we got our loan direct deposited to our personal checking account, we took the money from our personal checking account and paid off our Chase Southwest card at $900, our bb and card at $1,746 and we paid down our Amazon card to $584 and those minimum payments what we did is we started recapturing those in a separate checking account so you take $50 which is our minimum minimum payment to 
Chase and $53, which was our minimum payment to BB&T, and we started paying that back to ourselves. Now, you see that we weren't paying this $103 back to the insurance company. We were paying this $103 into a separate checking account that we owned. You see, we paid $103 back to ourselves in our separate checking account until April, I'm sorry, this is May of 2017. What happened was this Amazon card, we continued to pay this 105 to this account and at this time is when we paid it off. But we were gonna pay them for the next 56 months. Because we paid this down with our insurance loan, we only had a balance of 584. So this 105 was taken care of in just a few months. So what we're gonna do is continue to make these payments back to ourselves. So we include this 105 plus this 53 plus this 50. Now we're paying $208 back to our separate checking account every single month because these three expenses are paid off. What's important to realize here is if we were going to pay $105 at 26% interest for the next 56 months, we would have paid $5,880 to Amazon. Our balance is only $3,394.18. So what we're doing is redirecting the principal and interest back to ourselves in this payment. So we didn't disturb or stop doing anything we weren't already doing. We were saving $10,000 a year already. The only thing we did is we changed our savings account to an insurance policy. We borrowed the money from our insurance policy. And the reason why we borrowed the money again is so that we don't disturb the compounding inside our insurance policy. We take the $5,456 we paid off and paid down three credit cards. Those minimum payments we started making back to ourselves. Now we have, at the end of the year, $1,661. What's really important to understand here is that $1,661 was leaving our pockets. It was leaving our household and going to Chase, bb and and Amazon. Now we have that money sitting inside our checking account to do whatever we want with that money. So what we're gonna do is October 2017, we took another loan from our insurance policy and we paid the interest on our loan from the previous year, $290. It's the 5% simple interest that we pay on this $5,456. This is the only thing that we pay back to the insurance company. So this is the part that people are most afraid of this 5% simple interest of $290. Would you be okay with borrowing $5,456 and then a year later paying $290, which is the 5% simple interest? And if I don't have this $290 for my income, I can pull it from the money that I recaptured. I use this money to recapture $1,661 and I have to pay $290. So when it comes to year two, I pay $10,000, which is my premium that I'm saving, plus the $290 back to the insurance company. So that's a total of $10,290. And I'm going to take another loan for $5,538 where we add that amount to the amount of money that we have in our separate checking account, which is $1,661, brings us to a total of $7,199. We're gonna take $7,199 and we're gonna pay down this Chase United card at 16.24% interest that we were gonna pay for the next 78 months. So we pay it down to $9,000 and we maintain this $370 to Chase United. The reason we skipped the Wells Fargo accounts was because there was zero interest, 0% zero interest. So we want to recapture as much interest that's leaving our household as we can. So the next is this Chase United at 16.24. With one $10,000 policy, what we're gonna do is pay off $120,000 of debt in a little over four years. So we took 
$40,000 out of our pocket and we're going to pay off $120,000 of debt because of how we redirect the principal and interest payments back to ourselves with this infinite banking process. All right, guys, I hope this information and this breakdown helped you connect the dots as far as how to utilize your whole life insurance policy and how infinite banking comes into place. Now, one thing people actually say is, do I have to get a whole life insurance policy? Why can't I just do this with my savings account? And you can totally do that with your savings account at the bank. But like we said before, you're only earning maybe 1% and it's not at a compound, compounded interest rate. So you can totally do this. Your results just may not be as vast or as great because your savings savings account isn't earning that guaranteed 4% compounded interest rate. And the other thing to note is that when you take your money out of the savings account, that money's gone. Whereas when you borrow against your whole life insurance policy, that money is still there. So you're continuing to earn money off of a greater amount every single year. Mm -hmm. But if you do it with your savings account, you're starting all over again, if that makes sense. So um, if you like the information that we shared with you, please subscribe to our YouTube page and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at wealthnation.io. Own your own lifestyle or someone else will. <laughs>